Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. We are still talking about force and torque measurement. I said, ok, we are using a strain gauge, we are using a Wheatstone bridge. Here, remember the Wheatstone bridge not too long ago. Uh, well, we have four, four resistors and if the resistors change a little bit, this was the formula that we say, ok, the output voltage is depending on the resistor change 1, minus the resistor change 2, minus the resistor change 3, plus the resistor change 4. And I said I can exchange 1, 2 or all uh, of those resistors with a strain gauge. Uh, then I measure the change. And if I measure the change of a strain gauge, I measure the strain. And if I measure the strain, I can, about the Young's module, I can calculate the, the stress. And out of the stress, I get the force. Easy. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So this was this what we have also talked about. So that there is whatever is measured here is positive. Whatever is measured here is negative, negative, positive. That's always the case. And now, depends on which resistors I want to exchange with a strain gauge, I should apply this to my workpiece, to the thing I want to measure. And this is what we are going to talk about today. Yeah? Strain gauge application examples. Yeah? Depending on the load case a little bit. Yeah? Because we want to We want to get the maximum out. Yeah? So this is let's let's do the first load case. The first load case, let's say, is bending. Alright? So we have an original form. Yeah? We have an original form looking like that. And now I bend this, all right, in this direction. So the changed form, changed form, would look like that. Banana. Okay, whoop, whoop. That's that's how this will be deformed by our band. Okay, so this was the original form. And this is deformation. And what I applied is some sort of, of force or torque in this direction. Z, z. Yeah, I wanted to look three-dimensional. <laughs> wanted to, to have it look three-dimensional. So the first, if I want to uh, have two, uh, one, one, sorry one strain gauge, we have to apply it. Well, here on the front it is extended. Okay, So there is tension, there is extension. Yeah? So the first strain gauge I would apply in this direction. Here, first. Yeah? This would be the first if I only want to uh, apply one. Yeah? And where to apply the second one, which is going to be negative. Yeah? We apply it here in the back somewhere. Maybe directly on the opposite side, but on the back. Yeah? Because in the back I have compression. It will, it will 
not expand, it will go together. All right, so two, because two is negative, so this will get more resistance, uh, less resistance, this will get more resistance, double the effect. All right, and where I have to apply the third one, I will apply it also here on the front. And the fourth one, somewhere on the back. Usually directly on the opposite sides, however, I wanted to show you uh, that those are on the back side. Yeah? Oh, sorry, three of course is here, and this is four. Yeah? Because three is negative, so always on the back, four is positive, so always on the front. Okay? So, Simply use the defects or the yeah, parameters, properties of the Wheatstone bridge and apply the strain gauges accordingly and you get maximum effect out of it. So if you have a full bridge, then you can use all four. If you want to use only one and four, yeah, use one and four. If you want to use two and three, use the, the, these back ones. Yeah? If you use half bridge, one and two, use one and two, and so on. Yeah? It does not really matter how much, this rule will always apply. And this corresponds to our, to our Wheatstone bridge, remember, R1, R2, R3, R4, and here we have the output voltage and we have the supply voltage. All right? This is corresponding. Yeah? 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. Plus, plus, minus, minus. So this is the load case band. Bending. Pretty fast forward. Now let's have a look at the load case uh, stretching. Yeah. Stretching. Original form would look like that. Right? This is the original form. Now we apply force here in this direction. Huh? And now what is the changed form? The changed form would look like it is getting smaller. Huh? And longer. Remember the rubber band I've shown you? The original form, apply, it's getting smaller and longer. Right? This will also happen to here. Eh? So here's the force. And if I, it's not stretching, if it's compression, then it will also be the case, but then it will be thicker and smaller. Okay, then the original form and the deformation is just switching places. So this is pretty much the same load case. So where do we apply? Where do we apply here? Well, number one is getting longer. Yeah? So number one I will apply here. Number two is negative and we are compressing in this direction. So here in this direction we have two. And where 3, I can put it on the other side, 
in this direction and 4 on the other side in this direction. Okay? Also the same. Yeah? And how to calculate this? Well, uh, if we think about a plate, let's say plate, uh, this is the original form of some work piece. Original form. And then I apply force here. Uh, then it will look like this. So it will get longer but smaller. Let's say now if this is direction one, this is direction two. Then I do have, of course, some, some stress, uh, some strain in direction one, epsilon one. Uh. And I do have some strain in direction two. And this ratio minus, however, uh, because one is negative, this is the so-called Poisson ratio. This describes how how one direction, how force in one direction is is influencing the other direction. Okay, so if we have a Poisson ratio of zero point five, yeah, the volume is constant because this means whatever is added here will be lowered here. Huh? So zero point five. Volume is constant. If we have smaller 0.5, yeah, then the volume is increasing. Uh, this is because we are tearing the atoms a little bit. Yeah, then this will get more longer and less less uh, shrink in diameter or width. Uh. So this. This is typical behaving of rubber. Uh, so this rubber, it's 0.5. Uh, typical examples, rubber, 0.5. Uh, then we have steel, for instance, and this is 0.27 up to 0.3. In this ratio, you see, the volume of steel is increasing under in the load case. Uh, then we have aluminium, for instance, 0.34. Uh, then we have lead, ah, lead, <laughs> zero dot four four. Then we have copper, zero dot three five. Concrete, zero dot two. This is the Poisson ratio. The Poisson ratio is describing the reaction of a material in one direction. Okay? If I apply here, now here, here I've applied a force F1. If I apply a second force F2, this will shrink in this direction and this will extend in this direction. So I have then a two-sided strain, yeah, a two-sided strain and two main main uh, stress directions, one in direction one and one in direction two. And to calculate those stresses out of the strains, yeah, we can use the following formula, yeah, sigma one, so the strain in one direction is the Young's module divided by 1 minus Poisson module and the strain in 1 plus 
the strain in two. All right? And sigma two, the other direction, it looks pretty much the same. However, the indexes one and two change place. So this is the the two axis stress. So you could use this. Huh? You, could use, you could use this again. Apply the resistors or the strain gauges. Replace the resistors in the in the bridge according to those one, two, three, four. Huh? Positive and negative. Think about it, and then. It works, All right? And then we have the torque. If we have some round piece, If this is the original line here, yeah, and I apply torque now, yeah, then the changed line would simply look like this, getting worse and worse and worse. All right, so here we have this change in a torque. Uh, we apply it in direction 45 degree. So this is one, this will be stretched, yeah? and this is two, and the other way around on the back side maybe will be three and four. Yeah? So the main, the main stress will be under 45 degree. There are even, there are even special forms of, of strain gauges for exactly that measurement. Look at that. Ah, come here. Come, put, 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 put. This is a typical torque measurement. See, bring the focus. You see, this is under 45 degree. Uh, this is for torque measurement and a strain gauge for torque measurement. And actually, it's already two strain gauges. Uh, so it's already one and two in one, in one application, in one form. Uh, so those are for torque measurement because you just have to apply it according to the axis. Uh, and then we have already this 45 degree. Put it back in. Bring the focus. Yeah. So we have here 45 degree. Maximum strains at 45 degree to axis. So these, those two are force measurements. These are torque measurement. Yeah. That's how in different load cases you can apply uh, the strain gauges. Yeah. Simply by just think what would be the best way to get the maximum out of my measurement if I'm using the Wheatstone bridge. But what if I'm not really sure how this thing is loaded? Yeah? What I'm not really so sure where the stress is, the maximum stress? Yeah? Because it's a little bit more complicated part than those. Yeah? And, and the, the forces applied to this part are not that clear. Yeah? Where is the maximum force applied? And it's not some some just some torque, just some bends, and some, this is a mixture of different load cases, what then? Uh, 
Huh? Then we can use a special uh, strain gauge, which has already three strain gauges built in. Uh, how this is working, how to determine then the maximum loads of this, I will explain in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.